All right, live from Pottawatomie Casino and Hotel, I got the one, the only, Anthony Showtime Pettis right here. Uh, we're sitting here with the championship belt and his brother Sergio, man. It's just uh, an honor to be with you guys in, in Milwaukee. I've, I've been here three and a half years trying to, you know, uh, coming from my background, uh, uh, running one of the largest casinos in the Midwest and, and doing some amazing, amazing uh turnaround as we invested 200 million dollars in this property and flipped it now we got the number one retail sports book this place don't look like what it used to and i know you guys have been around yeah, seeing pot of water me uh, a long time and uh, everywhere i go what I'm, I'm like i'm in the in the trails of the true legends and that's you guys in this city uh everywhere i turn it's like uh people i meet next thing i know it's just like we're we're one step away from each other, and I just always continually hear great things, man. So uh, in your city, man. Well, I appreciate you for having us, man. Yeah, and the sports book is amazing, bro. Even this, the studio, you guys have done some good stuff here for sure. Yeah, high level. I've been in a lot of studios and definitely top tier. Probably the most beautiful studio I've been in. So you guys are doing it right. No, and uh, look, you know, at this time with your brand worldwide, Showtime, the brothers, the amazing things that you guys are doing, bringing us together with Pot of Water, mean, man, it was. You know, it was meant to be. That's the way these uh, organic relationships happen that really take off. People that you like working with, people that you trust that are doing big things. Uh, you know, in my world, uh, I don't get or be around a lot of uh, entrepreneurs like yourselves. Uh, uh, most of my business is, you know, dealing in a, in a big structure and environment and and uh, lots of uh, lots of layers. And so it's an uh, honor for me to see individuals like you who are so successful. You know, it, it's just, uh, you know, everybody wants to aspire and and uh, to be there uh, like that. But I know, you know, it, it take, you know, day in, day out, 365, 24-7 dedication to be, uh, you know, to achieve some kind of greatness like that and to be successful and to be a leader for uh, Latinos all across America yeah. and, and the world for that matter, yeah. doing what you're doing and being successful. So... Uh, let's uh, jump right into it, man. This this fight card coming November seventeenth, man. Tell us what you put together and what's happening, man. Yeah, so APFC is my uh, my organization where I'm putting on like the college level of mixed martial arts before they get to the big show, before they go to the UFC, Bellator, PFL. We're giving them a platform. I mean, look at this facility we're gonna be hosting these fights in. So these guys are getting treated like royalty right away from the jump. Um, we're giving them a real place to uh, excel and, and expand their brand, get the awareness on UFC Fight Pass. We're broadcast on Fight Pass and just that feeling of actually being a professional athlete. So when I, we were coming up, I remember he, he was fighting like uh, sports bars. Like we, 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 they would clear out the uh, middle of the, the bar, put a cage in there, and you know we would have, that was how we got our, up, our, our names built to get to the big show. And you know, now that the MMA is so big right now, it's probably the fastest growing sport. I mean, it's 30 years old now, and it's, it's man, I think this is what I say about fighting. No matter what language you speak, you know what fighting is. Like basketball, it's football, it's, there's, there's fans, there's certain areas. Fighting transcends worldwide. Wherever we go, I mean, people know what fighting is. That's why the sport's growing so fast, I think. But yeah, so for APFC, we're just trying to build a real stepping stone for these guys that, are, that, that want to you know, become a professional fighter and go to the UFC, go to the, to the big shows, um, but actually feel like it on the lower level. Man, that's amazing. If you really break down what he just said, man, this is... This is a whole new opportunity for everybody out there sitting around on their couch thinking about I'm, it's time to get up and do something today. You know what I mean? Most like definitely. you're creating that alley to say, look, there's an opportunity. If you want to get up tomorrow and work hard and be there and put it work in and get around the right people, there's going to be a chance for you. You got to get seen and you're breaking down doors that weren't there for you guys. And like that, that always for leads, sure. you know, I'm, I'm always a believer if I'm going to get in a fight, I want to fight the good fight. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and this way, you know, if I go down, I, I went down and what I was supposed to be doing. And, uh, you know, you're never going to win all the time and you're always going to have some setbacks. You got to you got to get up and take it and uh, believe in yourself and continue to uh, move on to the next step and the next challenge. Right. Definitely. I it's mean, so mixed, mixed martial arts. I always said is it's the highest highs and the lowest lows. Like you, for me, I, I went on like a seven fight winning streak won a world title, actually here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Before it was the Pfizer Forum, it was called the Bradley Center. It was across the street, and uh, I grew up going to that arena, and I got the chance to fight for the UFC belt in that arena. It was, it was, it was a, a crazy moment in my life, you know, because it was like going, going to that arena, I remember always sitting up in like the nosebleed seats. I, we couldn't afford to like get close seats, and then walking out, my name's in the lights, you know, Anthony Showtime, Pettis. And it was just such a surreal moment for me. Right. I couldn't lose that match, you know, so I, I won the belt here in my hometown, um, and, you know, 
the highest highs. I was on a Wheaties box, Wheaties box right after that. First fighter ever, only fighter, MMA fighter to be on a Wheaties box. But then two fights after that, I lost. So it was like highest highs, lowest lows in the sport. But the biggest thing in mixed martial arts, what it taught me, and I think it's like business wise as well, is don't give up. Like no matter no matter what happens, how 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 hard it feels, how how many setbacks you get, as long as you don't give up, you're still you know pursuing more and getting better. And look, I mean, you're just you know getting started down this path. I can imagine in five years as yeah. you continue to build this stack. You know, everything that we talk about uh, in business is about creating a sustainable. Uh, uh, advantage, right? You can have a competitive advantage today, but is it sustainable, you know, and you got to build your foundation right to peak your highest, you know, um, and, uh, you know, there's there's all aspects to business, leadership, management, and strategies, you build this up, but I could see in five years, and that's why this is so important, all those people out there watching and wanting to get involved and to uh, be a part of what you're doing, uh, th this is the beginning, you know, this is like the IPO. This is where you need to get in, put your work and get ready because you're going to uh, show them and give them an opportunity to get a real ticket, to get a real fight. I mean, look, I flew into Las Vegas. We walk in, he wasn't kidding. Like, look, we're going to go shake Dana White's hand. We're going to go in here and uh, Pettis is legit. This isn't something that I, I ain't got to tell anybody in Milwaukee yeah, yeah. that, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, I've been here three years, so forgive me. You don't know <laughs> what the, uh, how uh, uh, just of a superstar you are in the city and, and to the people. But uh, yeah, I think when uh, uh, they they see this, it's the real deal. I just, I walked into it, flew into it, and uh, experienced it myself in the last few weeks, and we're back together again, and I'm watching it. and. Look, I've been pretty successful in business and taking care of people with their investments, and I can see that this opportunity, too, with individuals like you, you know, where this can go. So yeah. th this fight card is just not a fight card. You could be seeing one of the next champions. Oh, you, you will, know. yeah. We got, so we, got, we got two guys, uh, two title fights here in Milwaukee. So the 155-pound title, which was my weight class, and the 125-pound title which is his weight class. Uh, both of those guys are fighting tonight. The winner of that uh, match, those two matches, will get you know APFC title, and they'll be getting a phone call right away from UFC. That, they'll be the next guys in line. So that, that's, that's exactly what I was trying to create, is trying to give that platform in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in my hometown. These guys train you know, at Rufus Sport up in 76 in Blue Mound. They win this belt. This opportunity for them is golden. It could change their lives. I mean, uh, and to be happening and. Potawatomi Casino in conjunction with our sports book and doing this podcast here and uh, I mean uh, all of this coming together was seemed like it was just Definitely. meant to be right it just yeah. at the right time the right conversations happen we sit down and you know we, we knew, the right people <laughs> we, we knew in 10 minutes so, you know I wasn't kidding around and yeah. everybody knows you are not kidding around so yeah, yeah. uh uh well, I knew that uh, I was just excited, and, and I can't imagine the excitement from the Forest County Potawatomi Nation, our uh, executive leadership at the Tribal Council, because everybody, you know, knows, and uh, us getting our foot into entertainment, and we, we got big plans to yeah, continue with this, this facility and uh, move forward. I feel like, you know, we just got started as well. Um, and this is one of the most, uh, or is the most visited attraction in the state of Wisconsin. You know, we sure. do 20,000 people a, a day. We got a team uh, built around us, um, being able to run a facility like this 365, 24 seven. So uh, yeah, I'm in the city, I know it's been, those tickets have been flying. Yep. People in my uh, elite circles have been reaching out and they they know that this, this type of deal. And so let's talk about the fight. I mean, this, dream and vision we had was like look this is our first mix and we're going to even continue to take it up next level but it's like we're going to do some vip stuff yeah. you know i'll bring the stuff off the top shelf if you're gonna <laughs> that type of guy i mean we, oh, yeah. we, we have it set it's a oh, casino yeah. if you don't it'll be like boom my crew will roll it in and downstairs so you know if there's something you want you drinking drinking crystal and sipping azul well oh, there man. you go that's, you know, that sounds we'll, like we'll, my kind of night that, that, <laughs> <laughs> so talk, talk us about the experience of what you set up yeah so the fight card um we got a kid from racine actually cody lynn um he's probably one of the top prospects at the 125 pound division and he's fighting a guy from miami florida who just came to our show in waukesha and got the high kick knockout high, super highlight performance so these two guys are fighting it's going to be a banger fight and then we have Mark Chuinski, that's the 155-pound guy. That's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, fighting a guy from Chicago, Illinois. So all the, all the Midwest guys, you know, the, 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 the Miami guys is, is, and the, the guy from Racine, exciting fight that everybody's excited to watch that. Even like Dana was telling me, hey, you guys are putting on some good cards. They're only getting better. And this is like our 
fourteenth fight show only. So like I've only been doing this for like two and a half years now. Like you said, like once I once I start learning this and we create these kind of relationships, it yep. only allows me to get more more better athletes. You know that that's what and that's what it, why I really wanted to do it. You know, growing up as a fighter, like we're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, we we born and raised both of us here. I grew up on Twenty Fifth and National, not too far from right down the block from here. Um, and uh, our dad was killed uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in a house robbery. So I feel like at that point in my life, you know, I was 16 years old, he was 10 years old, and, you know, I had to make a decision. And I think that when my dad died, like, of course I went through my dark times and was trying to figure stuff out. And, like, as, at 16 years old, you're trying to figure out. I was supposed to be thinking about homecoming and prom and stuff, but, you know, I, I was thrown into a, a position where I had to figure out how to pay rent, how to take care of my family. Um, and, and luckily for me, I had martial arts. That was kind of like my grounding. But without martial arts, I definitely wouldn't be in this position. So my mom put us in Taekwondo. Um, at a young age, I think I started when I was five. He started when he was like three years old. Came out. Yeah, I came out. And done we, we, yeah, we were doing that one our whole lives, and that was my first introduction to business. So I, I, I have, I, we still have a gym here out in uh, uh, West Dallas, right by his house. We have Pettis Martial Arts where we teach traditional Taekwondo. We still, I still give back to that because I know how important that was for me as a kid. Like, not only the martial arts had taught me, but the life skills, and that's what the big thing is: like confidence, self-respect, discipline, understanding the you other know, that hard work. Re, it requires hard work to get to the next level. So the young, at a young age, I learned that through Taekwondo. And, you know, when we decided, when I decided to turn pro, he was just tagging along. He was just like, you know, t high school you're into? Yeah, I was eighth grade. Eighth, eighth grade, grade, yeah. Eighth oh, yeah, I was, I was coaching his yeah, eighth grade basketball coach. team. A basketball coach. <laughs> and quick, and I got honest. the first phone call. Yeah, I got the first phone call. And there was like, uh, hey, do you want to, you know, you got, you got your ticket in. I was fighting the WEC. First fight was in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, I, was t I was coaching his basketball team, and that was like my, my introduction into mixed martial arts because we, we, we were like very competitive in Taekwondo. He was, our, he was the only world champ of, of all the brothers like in Taekwondo. He, he won world champ in Taekwondo. I could never achieve that. It was like a, a different, um, it's, it's, it's point sparring, so it's like more Olympic style, like, and he was just really good at it. Um, so when I when I went to mixed martial arts, you know, he was just tagging along in the gym. I'll, I'll, let, you tell, I'll let him tell his story, yeah. but... My, my objective when my dad died was I always, I remember like, yo, I gotta be a role model for this kid. I gotta give him a path out of where we grew up at. Cause you know, our cousins, you know, gang bang, violence. Milwaukee, Milwaukee is a tough place to grow up in. You know, there's, there's a, the, the city aspect of it. We grew up on the South side. So, you know, it's a, all Hispanics in one little area. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so when, when my father died, that's when I made that decision. Like, I'm gonna go all in on this. I'm mixed, I'm mixed martial arts. I'm gonna take it as far as I can. And it really happened fast for me, man. Like I, I had three, four fights in the WEC. I did, jumped off the wall and did a Showtime kick. Became the first uh, MMA fighter ever on ESPN top ten play a top ten playlist. So I transcended. I, I did so much for this sport. I think that's why I got the respect that I have in this sport. You know, Dana respects me, and you know, PFL guys respect me. Bellator respects me, um, and and I'm always an honest guy. So I, and I, when I did that, that, that kind of you know punched my ticket for superstardom. I blew up. I did the MTV show. Um, and then I won the UFC world title. So like my skill set backed it all up. You know, I, I had an amazing career in mixed martial arts and without, you know, without Taekwondo and, and you know, my father dying and going through that hard time, I definitely wouldn't be in this position right now. See, I think, you know, your brand is, you know, it, it's just getting started even yeah. though you've been a world champ. What you have to offer to, to life, to people, to, you know, we all want to be there. I mean, I only hung out a few times, and since we did in the last few weeks, man, I've been eating right. I'm going to get my, my stuff on check. I've been, yeah, get my little exercise. I mean, yeah. it's not my, all right, come on, you know, but for, you know, no, I was kind of inspired, too. Like, look, man, get your, get your health in check, man. That's mm -hmm. what you got to do. Get your head on right. And uh, I was I was motivated for it, and you weren't even trying to do it. I just, <laughs> I just that's just part of your brand. Yeah, so it it's is. like, it's part of my life. you know, in today's world, uh, I see that, and uh, I love to see this where it's going. I mean, there's so many more things I think that uh, you have to offer, even uh, besides just uh, you know APFC man uh, and the rollout. I mean, this is going to be epic and uh, uh, open a ton of opportunities for individuals out there that are listening to understanding what you're really doing with the guy with the right connections, the right mindset, and does care about his fighters and. You know, that's what I'm excited, too, because we're going to roll out uh, the red carpet as they yeah. show them good treatment here and make sure they get the right meals, the right food, the right service, and everybody enjoys their time so they're just focused on their fight. And it's you go in there and you leave it all out there, and it is what it is, man. There'll be a winner and a loser at the end of the day, but, you know, you can't uh, control that. Yep, nothing else out in your mind. You put it aside and did what you needed to do. I, 
I can't imagine, uh, you know, that kind of mindset yeah. that week leading up to it, man. I'm excited to get these guys checked into the hotel. Wait till they go to the hotel. <laughs> They're like, whoa, what is this? You know, it's a big difference from, uh, you know, Motel 8 to the, you know, the budget hotels that they are used to, you know, because on the lower level of mixed martial arts, it's still growing right now. There's, there's still, you know, there's 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 an audience for it, but it's, it's not organized yet. So once, once you get organized, you know, it'd be like, you know the the college level and uh, and one is like one you know what that is and one basketball yeah so when that came out that was like the street league street basketball guys that couldn't make it to the league I feel like the the lower level mixed martial arts has that trajectory where there's going to be a ton of eyes on it the audience and you'll have some superstars that'll go and become world champions but you also have guys that at the lower level are already have a fan base have something that they can fall back on, make enough money to, you know, sustain a life that's, you know, feels like a professional martial art, a professional athlete. And my team, man, look, we're, we're going to be thinking of ideas all along the way to build these fighters' brand, win or lose, when they show up. Like, we can, you know, this is, we can do what we want. If we want to bring them in here and talk after the fight. Yeah, that'd be you know, amazing. You know, just to have a quick breakdown, and this way we can recap the fight and have a nice spread out there across social media as well. And and uh build it up you know we want to hear from you guys tell us what you want to hear you know we can build this up we can uh loop in in the studio we can bring in what do you want to hear what are the questions you want to ask them i mean that's what it's about it's about yeah. the fans what do you guys want to hear and and talk about after you know watching watching the fight you know what struggles did they have what was going on i think that all makes it exciting to hear sure. where they're at in life when when they get ready to step in that ring so that they know it, it ain't money what they're fighting for right now they're fighting for their life you know, this 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 is it. This is yeah, the chance, it's right? A, it's a stepping stone to could change your life, man. You go out here and perform well. You know, you're on UFC Fight Pass. All the people that well, the people that matter in the higher levels are watching these cards to see who's next, and that's how you get the phone call. You know, you out there, you impress. And the crazy thing about fighting is, you know, it's a 15 15 minute fight on the lower level. You got three five minute rounds, and whatever happens in that 15 minutes, you know, is there for the rest of your life. You, know, it's, it, it, you could have the best training camp. You could have the best weight cut, and then you go out there and you shit the bed and have a bad performance and you got to figure it out, and it, it's there's no there's no there's a team. You know, there's got your coaches, you got your people behind you, but it's really all on you when it comes out there. That cage door closes. It's you versus another man, and whoever wants it more usually wins. Yeah, well, sitting here with your brother, man, it's like if you see my brother, man, we we just like you too. Yeah, <laughs> my brother Steve Ortiz. Yeah, he's a little older, and uh, yeah, you'd hear the same laugh, same look, and you know, just as it is. So, Sergio, man, talk to me. Tell me about a little bit about your story. Uh, 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 your background and uh, where you at today in life. You know? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Anthony Pettis is younger brother, so uh, I grew up in the sport. Um, I was 13 years old, we competing in Taekwondo, and uh, I won my world championship in Taekwondo. And around that time, I kind of kind of got over it. You know, I was like, uh, kind of feeling what, what's next. My brother made the transition to kickboxing and did MMA. And uh, it was such a different sport that I was used to. It was a little bit more rougher and tougher. and. Uh, I think that sport actually brought us real closer together, you know, create this bond that we have, uh, the training together, you know, helping them prepare for fights. I was 15, 16 years old, uh, helping them prepare for fights. I didn't realize how important they were, you know. It was just uh, something I was doing to have fun and something that I, I just enjoyed because it was making me a tougher individual, teaching me the, the life skills I needed to be a man. And, um, yeah, I just came and turned into this, you know, turned into this this legendary uh, duo, you know. We're both champions. I think we're the fo first, uh, first champions. Brother, first brother world champions. Yeah, first brother champions. So. Uh, it's been pretty awesome, man. You know, my mom had a dream back then that she was like, two of uh, my sons are going to be on this this uh, platform. I don't know what it was, and we thought it was Taekwondo at the time, and uh, turns out it's mixed martial arts. Martial so arts, yeah. pretty crazy how things have turned out for us. Man, you tell a story reminds me. I was, uh, I ain't saying I had a vision, but I had a vision. You know, when I was younger, man, it came to me, and I was going to be around this fire, and my brother and I were in this circle together and around that fire, and that's our traditional place. I was you know, given an Indian name in 1982 by some traditional elders on our res and brought around that fire. So, uh, you know, when I was about 18, I had this vision and it came to me and this eagle landed on my shoulder and said some words to me. And I said that to my Indian grandmother and she's like, you know, you don't even know what your grandma, my grandmother's Indian name is, but that's her Indian name. And what it told me is, uh, wow. Uh, that you know I'm always I, I knew that I'm always gonna be around that fire you know and and so it ended up that uh, sure enough you know uh, 30 years later I'm running the largest pot of water me nation with that flame in the casino and we've done great things here and uh, you know I always uh, 
I left home from Kansas to with my career and, and tried to go and went through gaming and went to the Mexico border with the Kickapoos and but Kickapoos are from Kansas, part of my family, still around that fire and then left again up to Michigan and I come back up here and this is the traditional homelands of uh, Ojibwe and Potawatomi and Odawa and I end up working for uh, the Saginaw Chippewa Indian tribe and then boom this opens up and what do you know? I'm, I, every time I try and get away from the fire, just I keep coming back. You know, be, th 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 thirty years. You know, and uh, and uh, so it's uh, you know one of those things in life. You just know that uh, it, hey, that's because uh, there are times you're gonna have to put everything on your back and risk it all, and and continue to move forward. And and uh, not every time goes your way. Tough. You know, you're gonna you're gonna falter. You're gonna fail. You're gonna feel tough in your own mind, your own sure. self, but. You know, just gotta gotta fight through that, and know that you got skills, that you worked hard, deserve what we got, and uh, we continue to push forward and and uh, make progress and and do great things uh, here in America, man. I mean, this is uh, this is where it's at. You know, successful entrepreneurs like yourselves and us partnering to do something great for Milwaukee and yeah. open up opportunities <clears throat> for deserving individuals, man. I mean, could couldn't be in a better place. Yeah, yeah, these kids are excited, man. I mean, like these the, the kids on the card. I mean, the new oh, so we have amateurs on the card. His little his younger uh, well his brother in law brother in law yeah his brother in law's <laughs> on the card. He's he's making his uh, second fight am, as an amateur. So like I was telling these guys, I'm like from the cage you're fighting in to the venue that you're gonna be in to the treatment you're getting. I mean, it's different than how it used to be. So you, you guys appreciate it and and you know take it take it as far as you can with, as far as you can go with it. Have you fought in Potter? No, I actually fought. He here. fought here. I, yeah. fought, I think I was on the last fight card they had here and I was probably like 19 years old. Is that right? Yeah, yeah so it was about 12, 13 years ago. That was a long time ago. Jeez, yeah, that was a long, yeah, time, a long ago. time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Time is fine. Time is fine. So we know you fight, uh, Anthony. What else do you do? You know, what else do you do? What do you like? Man, now, we've talked about a few things. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a busy guy, man. I, I'm, I'm still, so I, we have a management company as well where we manage fighters and, and that takes a lot of my time too. So like getting, getting these guys the opportunities outside, you know, APFC obviously is one of them, but there's a lot of fight shows and a lot of organizations that it takes stepping stones to, to find, you know, these athletes the right, the right place. I, I spend a lot of time with my fighters, with uh, my management company. Um, obviously APFC is my baby right now, but I still fight myself, man. So I'm, I'm. I'm a prof I'm a professional boxer, professional mixed martial artist. Uh, just done karate combat, so I'm all across the the combat sports world. I'm you know for me like I always tell everybody I'm a prize fighter. You know when I was with, with the UFC, my objective was becoming the UFC champion. I accomplished that, and this time in my my career where I'm at, I feel like I got to be a role model for these younger guys coming up to show them like all right, this is what happens after you fight. This is how you be successful after you have your yes. big run, and and there is a life outside of fighting that you can you know start while you're fighting and it doesn't have to be you know a fight show it doesn't have to be a management company but as long as you're building something while you're fighting I try to teach him that all the time like you build something that is sustainable that you can fall back on because fighting isn't a career it's a it's a blessing you have a small window of uh, you know time with that and you know as long as as long as well for me I made a brand with that and it allowed me to keep going with the fight world but some of these guys don't have the opportunity you know they don't get to fight you know that quick but uh, outside of fighting you said I uh, me and this guy like love to fish we're fishermen so we We've been fishing for you know a long time. Uh, we, he's went fishing out here. Did you catch anything? No. <laughs> <He laughs> the last got, couple of times. Been he got skunked <laughs> out here. But uh, you know the, the salmon come up the river. We uh, my condo's like right by that river there, so we, we get out there. We're fishing for salmon. Uh, we hit the lake. You know we're out. We're sturgeon. All stur yeah, yeah, sturgeon. Catfish. catfish. We, we, uh, fishing's like one of my my, my, my passions outside of fighting. Um, and then I saw I have two daughters, so my my kids are on my world. You know, like providing for them and, and showing them that. And I don't like giving my kids everything. You know, I want to make sure they work for their stuff. But I, I just my time. Like so, I flew back to Milwaukee. My daughter had uh, two basketball games Monday night and Tuesday night. So I came back just to watch her play basketball and show her that she's you know still important and she's you know I'm making no matter what I'm doing, she still has my time. You know, so I, I make sure I always get back to that. Well, you said fishing, and now we're best friends. <laughs> we got to like, get well, out yeah, there. I know. If you you Google me, you're gonna see. I've been. I've been running the waters for 20 years, oh, wow. uh, running bass tournaments, fishing. Okay. Call me Mr. Semi Pro. All right, nice. I've been. I fish from uh, in, down on Amistad to uh, uh, down in Laredo and, and Zapata on Falcon Lake Damn. to uh, uh, all the way up through all the lakes in uh, the Ozarks and then up to the Great Lakes. I had to ditch all my 18 years of largemouth gear and switch over to small mouth gear and upgraded my boat to what's called a, uh, a PHX 21. It's the 
the Phoenix boats are the best in the yeah, Great badass. Lakes to be running with the 250 Merc on the back, all electronic setup to compete. And I got whooped for a couple of years, and then I started figuring out the game. And you got to get, you got to learn how to run these waters. You got to know your equipment. You got to be ready. And no matter what, whether it's big weather and storms and running river and big open waters, not to kill yourself and what your <laughs> boat can and can't do because right, sure. people get rescued and flipped out there and die all the time. And you got to know, you know, what's happening. So after about three years, I know Pettis or nothing, no championship. <laughs> okay, it was just the lower level weekend warrior stuff here, all right? It ain't like I'm going to chase, but, you know, hey, I, I went up against the locals are the best of the best. Uh, and, percent. They know, and, they and, know, and I, I they caught, know the waters. I was, I was cashing checks my last three, oh, coming out of Detroit River, man, showing them. Everybody nice. knew who Ortiz was. You know, there wasn't a many or Show us some things. Yeah, we gotta get on, we gotta get on when we show us something. I, I, look, strong. you got the largest uh, smallmouth uh, world class fishing in the world right yeah. here in Door County. Yeah. I go out and compete in uh, the Sturgeon Bay Open, and then all the pros from across the country come in, and it's one of the uh, the tournament to be at. And I love jumping in the mix, and I've been getting better year over year, and I'm in it. So it takes a couple years, and then once you get everything yeah. situated, because and you know, everything's you know, got to get right to go out yeah. and, and catch five fish and, and be able to deliver and execute. No break-offs, no mess-ups, and mm -hmm. on time, out and battling. Whatever waves that uh, come, I've been on six-foot waves with my boat, oh, looking up Lake Erie going, bless yeah. me, I'm going to turn around and ride it like a surfboard and, <laughs> and just compete. And I'm That's like, what scary, am I doing? Yeah, I'm, trying yeah. to, I'm literally trying, What's I'm, up, I'm trying to win $5,000, man. Oh, five I know, okay. I know, right? Yeah, I'm trying to good. die out here for <laughs> $5,000. <laughs> five you know, but look, if you know Bragan fishing, rights, fishing, rights. Fishing, yeah, Bragan rights yeah. for sure. fishing's about uh, fishing, man. So when you're out there and there's nothing to do out there but to be in the tournament, so all my rest of the world and the things that I do, I just got to push pause because yeah. you're going 70 miles per hour in a Great Lakes and a badass boat getting ready to crash and do who knows what, where, when, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's fun. Yeah, we're going to get out, uh, boys, and we're going to go catch What's some biggest world, world, world class smallmouth. Uh, smallmouth, probably like seven five. Ooh, yeah, they get solid. up to nine out here, yeah, nine yeah. pounds in the fall right now, and the weather seven, five, as warm geez. as the earth has been getting. Bless her and this mother earth. It's a uh, you know it's been uh, slowly been getting warmer, and you're fishing longer yeah. in the fall. Yeah, you guys crazy. have noticed it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, she uh, was eighty degrees when I got here. I'm like yeah. seventy eight degrees. I'm and like, and I'll be crazy. catching some of them cohos and, and kings when they in there. I got my I got my slip bobbers. I got yeah. some Those spoons. Nice. I, I'll be I'll be out there. Yeah, and, I was, I was getting skunked, kings, man, last few days. <laughs> the kings on the uh, and Racine in Kenosha that right off the back you, the bobber and the spawn sack that's the, my funnest way to catch them like uh, well look I caught my first coho out here man and I chopped them up right there took them back put them on the egg smoked them it is the best salmon yeah. you're gonna eat in your delicious, life cooked delicious. I mean I ate them within two hours I was like I, I can't eat salmon anymore like literally, you go to a store, you're not gonna get it like yeah, that. It they're like that. flying in and across the country, but in there, that, no, they just you literally cut it right there on the shop. Oh, fresh, fresh, fresh. I'm blown away. I'm like, this is heaven. So. We were just in uh, Costa Rica, um, cell fishing. That's crazy, man. So like, you're out in, in on the, the, the ocean, and like, we, I didn't think we were gonna catch that many selfish. I mean, how do we catch like six of them? Yeah, call it six. Like six selfish yeah. in, in one go, man. And these things are, you can't take them to the boat, nothing like that, because they're protected, but. It's a fun fight. They're jumping How was the, the weather? It was calm. You didn't get into anything to catch. It was good. Yeah, it was. It was chill. Yeah, it was. They knew what they were doing. Like we told them what we wanted to catch, and man, we, that's what we caught. We caught only that, and it was. It was monsters. Fun. They're monsters too. Yeah. Yeah. He went fishing in Thailand, right? That's. Oh yeah, in Thailand went that, fishing. That was crazy. Dude, was crazy. They like stocked the waters with like arapaimas, carps, like all these big fish. I caught a hundred and thirty pound. Uh, carp. How long did it take you yeah. to Like 30 minutes. And it's, it's like 90 degrees. So I lost like three pounds. Out of fish. Yeah, they, were, they were looking at me like, you probably shouldn't be sweating this much. That's just rough, man. When you're out there and like Dude, and crank it. Man, that's just rough. Well, we're going to we're gonna have to do a show and roll out on my boat, go to the Great Lakes, slam some yeah. big small mouth. We'll put a little piece together and one well, of y'all get a, one of my crew will roll with this in the boat and uh, fun, video man. record it, and we'll go out and slam it, man. I've been, love that. I've been up here hunting this for three years now. I'm, I'm competitive now. I'm in the mix, and uh, uh, it's exciting stuff. So uh, more to come. Yeah, I would yeah. love that. That would be amazing. All right, guys. Well, live from Pottawatomie, man. This is a wrap. We hope to see you at the fight on November 17th. It's going to be one of a kind, and, and don't forget, man, this is just the beginning. <laughs>